to the 18650 module assembly video. Today we're just going to um, assemble one of the modules. These can be used for any sort of application where you need a large pack of lithium-ion batteries. We typically use the 18650s out of laptop batteries and we build bigger packs. This pack is going to be for either solar or um, uh, electric vehicle. I'm just going to use a blade and just cut away, cut away the module, cut away the, the baffling. Start on one corner and just go around the module. And then we have to slice down on the corners. We have to put some pressure on it. And we should be able to break it all the way. And then we're going to clean up the, the brim uh, with a deburring tool. And the next step is to remove these um, these supports. Let's use some long nose pliers for that. So that's pretty much done. That's one of the modules cleaned up, and I've already got another module cleaned up, ready to go. And we're going to grab uh, three of the little um, spaces and we're just going to make sure that they're sort of level. So I'm just going to grab a bit of um, sandpaper, use like an 80 grit. Just make sure it stands, stands straight. So grab one of your modules. The next job is going to be just to drill out some of these holes. So I've just got an M4.5 drill. We're just going to drill out these six, six holes here. There's also four terminal holes to drill out, and I'm going to use an M3, M3 drill bit for that. Next we're going to install the spacers onto one side of the module. Grab your first three screws. Now these are, these are M4 by about 10 self tappers, just with a normal pan head. Grab a screwdriver, Phillips. Tighten it up, do that for the remaining two. Let's put those aside. We've got our 10 cells. And next we're going to clean up the contacts and put a, put some insulation underneath the positive, positive um, strip to keep the heat off the positive terminals and also uh, stop melting through when we solder in the center of these because to protect the cell. So I typically use a rotary uh, rotary sanding tool, rotary flat wheel, and just in a just normal cordless drill is fine. So we're just going to just make sure all those terminals are cleaned before soldering. When you're sanding, just make sure you don't come against the the insulation on the top of the cells. Now we're going to install a little bit of uh, paper or cardboard underneath the positive terminal again just to keep the heat away from the from the top of the terminal when we solder and so what we do is just lift up the strip a little bit so we can get some cardboard under there grab some uh, scrap cardboard and then cut a strip off probably about six mils wide just so you can get it in between those two terminals under the nickel strip so just in install it there actually you can probably fold it if you can get two layers, a little bit thicker would be better. Just poke it under there and just cut it to length. Just repeat for all the cells. And careful when you're pushing something under here not to damage the, the plastic on the top of the terminal. And you can just push the nickel strip into the cardboard to keep it in place. So what this cardboard does when we we're going to solder in the middle here and it's just going to stop the heat from traveling through the nickel strip into the top of the battery and and also you know, just minimize the amount of heat going to the top of that cell which could damage the positive terminal so now we can install the batteries into the modules and we're going to face them all the same way 
install the other side of the module. Put the top three screws in. Next we're going to install some wires in the tops and bottoms to bridge all those into the one big parallel pack. So you're going to have 20 cells in parallel. So we're going to use some 10 amp wire and just we're going to strip back the section. I usually take about the length of the module and we're just going to strip that insulation off. rest of it on the other side. I twist it together, stop it falling apart. So uh, what I'm going to do next is just fold it in half and uh, just twist that up. That'll give us a 20 amp capacity on that leg. What I'm going to try and do is feed that through one end. And we want the loop to, to sit over that hole, that terminal hole. So we're going to secure that with a uh, M M4 screw later on. So we've got to get another piece of wire for the other side. And fold it in half again. And then install that one. come down the other side and we've got to get them to meet up in the middle here. Grab yourself an M again just the same M4 by 10 mil self-tapping screw and just feed that through the, the loop in the terminal. And screw it down. And then we're ready to solder in the little linking link up wires. This, this will usually carry about uh, 10 amps before it blows, so it acts as a fuse for each, each cell. So we're just going to link link a wire from the middle of this, this cell, this is a positive terminal, just out to that, that connection wire. So that connection wire is uh, 20 amps per side, so it gives us a total safe capacity of around 40 amps. So we'll just start at one end. So I'm just going to strip back a bit of the insulation. Heat up our soldering iron. I use a fairly big tip in the soldering iron. It's going to pre-tin all this, all the cells. Now I usually use a fairly high, a big tip with a high temperature, so I don't want to spend too much time on the on the cell to avoid too much heat conducting into the top of the cell. And try and keep the iron away from the top of the cell, so always just go in the middle above your above your insulation cardboard. Just put a fairly healthy bulb of solder there. Start connecting up the cells. So just put your put your wire down there. I'm using a pre-tinned sort of a wire wrap wire. So it saves me tinning each each piece of wire as I go. And then I usually loop the wire around a little bit just so it doesn't, I don't want it really being tight. So it's probably a good sort of 20 mils off the end of the terminal. Strip back a good 5-6 mils of the insulation. And then position it over the other wire. throw some solder on it. So you want a fairly healthy blob on there as well to make sure that it um, is joined reliably. So that's the first one done. And just repeat for the, the other nine. So that's complete and now an important step is to actually just um, cut off the excess at the ends. You need a fairly fine pair of side cutters. 
That's one side done. Now we're going to repeat it for the other side. And we're going to go on the opposite opposite side for the other side. Because when they link up, it's going to they're going to crisscross in series. Next, we're going to assemble the 18650 modules, seven of them, into a 7S pack. It should give us a pack of uh, 24 volts, 20 cells in parallel. So it's 7S20P. So we're going to start with pre-cut some 6mm um, M6 rod. These are about 400 long. You can do them shorter, but I usually leave a bit of extra so I can mount it. I can um, bolt it to something. So these are 400 long, four of them. Eight washers, eight nuts, and 24 spacers. The spacers are really more for um, high current packs. But these may go in a turtle press later on, so I'm just going to put them in just in case. And we, and um, they allow for the air to go through, so you can mount fans on the end to blow air through to cool the cells if you're drawing a high current out of them. So we'll start with the with one that, with the first module. So we'll put um, put one of the one of the spacers on the on the rod, poke it through, throw a washer on there, and a nut. And just get it sort of flush, and we'll do that for the other other three. And also take note where your where your terminals are going to finish. So this will be the negative point of the battery pack, and this this other side here will uh, will simply link to the module next to it to form the string. So once we've got the first module set up. We'll just tip it up on its back, and then we're just going to throw the modules modules on top. So make sure we've got our spaces in there. We'll sit it down. Grab your next module. So then we're going to line up the, the terminal. Now this is going to be the this is a positive terminal. We're going to make sure that that lines up with the negative terminal of the next module. So flip your module over. So that's negative. So this 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 needs to line up with this screw. So flip it around. And then just throw it on top and drop it down. And then just double check everything lines up. So you can see here positive is gonna these positives gonna link to negative of the next module. And throw your next four spaces on. Grab another module. And just continue until you get all seven modules stacked on. And then throw in your your final four washers, and then your then your nuts. And grab a, a ten mil spanner and just tighten it down. And that's the pack complete. Next, we're going to start making up the forty amp interlinks between the modules, and we're just going to use a two 10 centimeter pieces of copper wire, 10 amp. This has just been recycled from the computer power cords um, and strip the insulation. So take two 10 centimeter pieces and we're just gonna twist them together to form a 20 amp, 20 amp strand of copper. And then that's gonna get doubled up to get to the 40 amps. So fold it in half, and then twist that up. So that's one done. We need to make two of these. So I'm going to strip some more wire. Again, twist them together. And then we're going to, I'm going to tie these together. We're going to tie it together with a piece of 10 amp wire again. This is 1.8 meters. Just again the, the 10 amp client's wire that we've recycled. And I'm going to strip off about eight, six to eight centimeters of the insulation on this side. And then we're going to wrap it around here to tie them together and then solder them. I'm going to 
hold that in a soldering block to heat the soldering iron. And then just uh, solder that, that link together. And you need quite a bit of solder on that. Let it flow all the way through the join. Cool down. It's a bit hot. We'll just try and trim the ends. So that's one of the interlinks made, a Cordham interlink, and we're going to install that next. So now we're going to install the interlink into the pack. Uh, we've already installed one on the other side, and so we're going to install the next next one on this side. It's going to work our way along. So undo your wire, feed it through, then undo your two screws. And you may need to, because it's quite a thick link, you may need to just pry your module apart in the middle there just so you can get it in easily. Just bend your bend your loops over. And then just put your screws back in. And that's it. So then we'll just put the rest of the interlinks in. And then the pack pack wiring will be uh, complete. Mm -hmm.